Why is this film unique? I. Kent Olberg's life is not necessarily on full blast across the internet. It's a little weird because he is, I mean, a world renowned wildlife sculptor. In fact, as wildlife monumentalist sculptors go, uh, he's probably on the Mount Rushmore, at least of present day. And he lives right in Corpus Christi, Texas. His work is all over the world. It's not just in Corpus. But Corpus has very clearly, and in his own words, become his home. You just drive down Shoreline Boulevard and, and you will see Kent's Mark. The idea that people know those sculptures, they know those monuments, but they don't know the guy. It, it's, uh, it's intriguing to me, at least from a, from a directorial standpoint. In the classic myth form, you know, one of the things about the journey is that the hero typically is developing a philosophy for living. And usually that philosophy in at least traditional myths is about figuring out a way to live forever. And when I think about what Kent is doing, sculpting in bronze and sculpting in stainless steel, no, he's not gonna live forever, but his work in a way could. It didn't come into the art scene, a world-renowned sculptor. He didn't come in with any status or resources. He was a poor kid from a fishing village. And in a way, the making of this film sort of mirrors that. I mean, you know, we aren't coming into this with a million dollar budget, nothing close to that, which is why we're ultimately relying on the support of individuals. Um, we've been very lucky to garner the support of a 501c3 uh, that fits right into the wheelhouse of, of what the film is all about at its core. Uh, so a big thank you to Friends of Redhead Pond for agreeing to step in and, and support the project to help get the film made. I'm deeply interested in what happens to a person when they choose to commit to their dream. In Kent's case, it's taken him God a lifetime to create countless works of art. You can look in his studio and see these massive pieces, tons of clay. And as great as all those are, I think the ultimate work of art is probably Kent's life itself. And that's why I'm thrilled to be able to tell the story.